Hey, welcome in everybody to the latest edition of the grittiest take by True Philadelphia and Sports Kids. We have just joined today by the wonderful Steel Flyers. As the Flyers might have not done it the prettiest ways, but we got it done. We moved on for the first time since 2012, and we're now facing those New York Islanders. So how are you doing today, Steel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I'm doing the cookie dance because we won. Ugly but good, dirty but good, greasy but good. I'll take it. All day long, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. First time since 2012. Uh, what an what an awesome feeling it is to to have such a great win. And I can't tell you what a pleasure it is. And I can't tell you how wonderful it is to be here on the show with you here, man. It's a uh, always a pleasure here to talk hockey with you, man. Love being here and love talking hockey with you, man. So um, great, great, great day to have the Flyers to be a Flyers fan for sure. So. That's how I'm doing. How are you doing? <laughs> doing well, doing well. I did want to, uh, when we were on the post game on Steel's channel, check that out. Uh, I, because there was a 5-3 score for the Islanders and Rangers, ended up looking on the wrong line and game same uh, stats of the uh, Rangers stuff, where against the Isles, we were competitive with them this year, but haven't beat them. We lost to them in overtime the first time we played them, which was early on in the season, back in October we yeah. lost three to two. Three then two, we yeah. put, yeah. Then we played them later on and lost four to three in OT. So we battled with them. And then the uh, other loss we had was later on at five to four. We uh, played them in April. And I believe Jason Martinez also said that we had another game scheduled against them to play, yeah. but it didn't end up happening obviously as the season rounded out. But a key point of what he said is the regular season normally when you look at those season series screws a lot of betters over when they end up betting on the playoffs because the playoffs are a different beast. Like it probably messed up a lot of people with the Rangers series. So yeah, uh, maybe <laughs> that, so um, that's why the Islanders play in us so good in the regular season and us not being able to beat them when they were able to find the ways to win. Might yeah. not translate to the regular season, especially because a couple of those games were early before we got our legs fully going. I agree. I agree. And even then, even in the later game when we played them later on in the season, like what was it, January or something like that? You know what I mean? That was not long after the <clears throat> not long after the break or something like that. I think right or something like that. Um, I can't remember quite exactly, but I. I still agree with you 100. percent And even even when we did our post game show, even still, um, you know, look, we this is what this or is. Or our beauty. loss in February was five to three. Excuse me. Uh, not yeah, five, there you go. Yeah, our final loss was five to three, not five to four. That was February. Yeah, that was February. Okay. Was okay. Okay. So that was before we got Grant and Thompson, right? Was that before the deadline, or was that? Yeah, our our final loss, uh, yeah, that was before we got other people. And then our loss um, before that was 5-3 to three also back in November because okay. this thing uh, yeah. had – it was 5-3 back in November because this was on November of 2018, so I looked at the wrong uh, thing. Okay. Uh, but it was 5-3, so I guess that's just a magic score for the Islanders to figure yeah. everything out against us. But uh, – their biggest thing is, like we said in the podcast yesterday, you just got to out aggressive and um, tenacity them because they have smaller defensemen other than Pulik and uh, Pellick and uh, Mayfield. But Mayfield's not really skilled. He's just a bigger defenseman. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. you have to uh, be able to be more aggressive against them. And then I think we would be fine. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I would have to agree with you on that. Um, even though I, I still think that the Islanders – one of the other things that, uh, you know, I think is really great about what we're doing here is the integrity of what we're doing. And it, it shows a lot when we can come back around and say, hey, these are the things that we need to make corrections on. So kudos to you, bro. Thumbs up to you, man, for real. You know what I mean? For keeping it real. Because that's why we do these, to keep the information flowing and to keep the correct information flowing. You know what I'm saying? So all good on that end for, for, for sure. I think the Islanders do present some different problems for the for the Flyers. I think we need to do a little bit of tweaking in order to match their speed. They do have some speed up the middle. But like you said, their defense, although 
has played very well, and they've played against us well in the regular season. I think it's a different animal once you get into the playoffs. And with their goalie being suspect and their defense being a little bit smaller, I think if we do exactly what you say, be aggressive right down the middle and take it to them and shove it right down their throat. I, I mean, we need to shove it right down their throat. That is the only way we're going to win this game, the, these series. Because if we play like we did against Montreal, <laughs> this ain't going to be a different story. <laughs> yeah. Like I said uh, yesterday in the post game, I think it's just a matchup thing. I think we got through Montreal how we wanted to get through Montreal. We'll play the Islanders more competitive like we did this year. Uh, we just couldn't end up coming over the hump with them, but we got to OT. We got to shoot out. So, I mean, it's not like we didn't compete with them. I think now that we have the full blown roster and everybody, that's going to help too. Uh, Knack maybe could be back, hopefully, yeah. by the next series, uh, where that would help with your four checking and everything. Yeah, he blocked and, that shot, yeah. right? Got, got his foot all mussed up. So, yeah. So we'll have to see uh, what happens there. And then JVR, you just need to tell him to establish himself in front of the net more. And then uh, he would be better because Grant's been struggling. So if Nat comes back, I would say Grant's the guy out and then JVR stays in because if you just tell him to park himself in front of the net, he's more okay. Value, value. Yeah, what if we can't – what if Nat isn't available and we still want to have Grant come out because of that very reason? Who do we put in there? Nobody, because I don't think you could put unless if you put in Bonneman, that's the only guy that you could say. But I mean, he plays a more 200 foot game. He's not a guy that normally just parks in front of the net, but he's big enough to do it. So you could put him in and tell him to do more of that role as well on top of what else he does for you. But it's not really what he does. It's something he can do. It's just not like when you see him on the ice, he plays great defensively, he wins face offs, mm -hmm. play the wing. And center, he's not really the guy you normally say, let's put him on the power play two and put him in front of the net for deflections at this point yet. He might be okay. able to be that, but I would say if you're going to do it, it has to be him because Frost isn't ready defensively, I wouldn't say. Not for this not gonna, He's not going to play on the bottom six. So if you, yeah. if you put Frost in, you also have to figure out a way to put him in your top six. So. Yeah, great point. Great point. But no, I just wanted to see what you thought about that, because what if Mac isn't available and we can't put him in there? Obviously, I think JVR needs to stay in. I mean, like we said uh, yesterday, I, I, I didn't even realize he was playing until they, they, they said that yeah. he was on the power play. I was like, well, wait a minute. Uh, OK, I have a hard time with something. And this is what I have a hard time with. I understand that you guys are away from your families and I understand that you're in a bubble and I, I get the situation as completely 100% different than anything you've ever faced ever, okay? But you, like, like if you're a fireman, okay, you sign up, you already know what you're gonna, getting into when you sign up to be a fireman. Just like if you sign up to be a police officer, a doctor, a nurse, whatever, you already know what you're getting into. You signed up to play hockey. You're getting paid a lot of money to play this game. What do we what what is it that we have to do to motivate you to get you to play a little bit more to what you should be playing? That's kind of how I look at things. What do we need to do to motivate that? I, I mean, is that paycheck not enough for you? I mean, eh, maybe it's just me. What do you think? Um I mean, I feel like with the playoffs, I mean, what? Who? Who are you talking about? Like, who's not motivated? Just JV. I'm not. Stop, I'm not saying that they're not motivated. It's just, come on. How how can the guy be so completely disappearing well, at times? And can't come back from a long layoff and jump right into high intensity. I think that's what we saw from Grant too. I think that's uh, more what it is than anything else. Some guys can bounce up quicker. Other guys can't bounce up as quick. So, uh, where great point. Um, I think JVR is always a guy that normally doesn't, except for when he started his year in Toronto, get off to the hottest of start. He normally gets going as time goes on. So that's not really unexpected to see from him. Now, Bonneman, I'm surprised, wasn't in the final game, to be honest, because of how off Grant has been. So yeah. I, I'm shocked if he's in 
next game because Grant, it's not like Grant looked great in the game that we won. He just looked okay. Um, so, I mean, that's why I feel you're probably going to do something there because AV also really likes Bunny when he's in. He ends up putting them against lines where you have people on Twitter going, why the hell is he going up against this line so much? Meanwhile, AV's going, this is my master plan, as like everyone on Twitter is making fun of him. Um, but Because uh, he skates with concrete, that's right? Yeah. Why, um I think I would be shocked if he doesn't play somewhat in this series, especially if Grant starts struggling. Now, if Knack comes back and that helps Grant to get going if he keeps him in, then obviously you're not going to pull him for somebody. But if Knack comes back, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Grant's the guy out because I don't think yeah. he JVR out against a team with Varlamov, who you also would prefer to crowd in front of the net because Varlamov's a pretty solid goalie if you can give him – well, like any goalie, but he's a very solid goalie, and he's now on top of his game in this playoffs if he has a sight line. So when he's on top of his game, like any goalie, you got to get him moving. Well, him, you have to get him moving more side to side. Some goalies you want to be get behind the net and play more behind the net. It depends on the goalie, but him, if you get him moving side to side and crowd in front of the net, you should be able to get some more goals on Varlamov. But uh, – you have to do it to more of a degree than Washington did because they did it a little bit, but they didn't have success with it. You have to figure out, not be kind of like Steve said yesterday, predictable. You you yeah. have to be unpredictable when you come into the offensive zone and do different things so that they don't catch on. And then you get in front of the net, you set up your shots differently. And that's how you're able to generate chances. Yeah. Yeah, what a great, you know, that's, see, that's why I asked that question, because I wanted to find out what we could do or what you would think. But, you know, to your point, I think we also played kind of that way against Price, because Price, as long as Price is, is square to the shooter and has the sight lines, <laughs> he is unstoppable, as we were able to see. And when you get him moving from left to right and you get somebody standing in front of him, giving him a little business, you know, that's when we can – that's almost every time we had good scoring and good scoring chances is exactly that. When we got Carey Price moving from left to right and we had somebody standing in front, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> I think we're going to have to play Malamov the same way. We're going to have to have somebody in front. We're going to have to have him moving from left to right. We have to be aggressive. We can't be predictable coming into the zone. You know what I mean? We got to move guys around, cycle guys around. I don't care that we keep the puck to the outside. That's great. We have great cycle. We have great movement and all that. That's great. But I want to see quality chances on goal. I want to see guys in – doing the same kind of things that's happening to us. Guys are skating and having point-blank range shots against us. Why can't we have the same against the opposition? Yeah, I think the Flyers, uh, I don't think against the Islanders, because you can beat the Canadians just scoring and then becoming, let them shoot their stupid shots. They want to shoot their shooting team. Just don't let them have any high percentage chances. Yeah. That's uh, what we did. The Islanders are not exactly – now, they aren't really the highest scoring efficient team until the playoffs start. But uh, they now figured out their scoring touch. So you have to be able to stop those guys because Barry trots his defense first. He's Jeez. like A.V. They're both of these coaches are – That's what I mean. Yeah. Make your defense lead to your offense, not yep. – be stupid on the offensive end so <laughs> there's a bunch of rushes on the other yeah, end. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, like, that's, um, that's why this is going to be an interesting series to follow because these teams play somewhat similar also just with higher magnified teams. It's not between a Flyers versus a Montreal. It's a Flyers versus New York, a team they battled with very well in the regular season. The difference is we didn't really have all the lineup guys we have now. So that makes a little bit of a factor. So that's what's going to see what happens, especially we didn't have Ghost fully healthy who look like or other than Pro V best defenseman probably in yesterday's game. So uh, I agree. that's why, yeah, uh, that's why um, I think this is set up a little bit differently here. And that's why I said it in the video we did yesterday along yeah. with you would probably be in six games for six the games. Flyers. And that's what a lot of people have when I read different articles of series predictions. Yeah. On the league. Everybody seemed to have six or some guy put seven. I forget who that was. Um, but 
uh, and then one person put five. Uh, but I was a little, little surprised by Whoa. that. But um, that like it's all over the place. But it's normally six or seven people have this series being one of the more fun ones to watch. If if they get if they get on a roll, if the Flyers just get clicking and get on a roll, th- then then yeah, then maybe we could go in five or six. You know, or you know, go in five. Um, if if not, then and if we drag this out and we let the Islanders dictate and we let the the Islanders into this and not be aggressive, then this is going to drag out. You know what I mean? Because the Islanders, I think, are going to be able to withstand the barrage that we're going to be able to send them at least for a couple games before they break. I think they will eventually break, but you know what I mean? It's that's, I just kind of, it just has that feel that if we just catch a little fire, you know what I mean? It, it just, if we get, see, cause I think that's how you have to get into the, to the Stanley cup because we, we've got momentum now. Okay. We won the game against, we won the series against Montreal. It was a hard fought series. Let's face it. There was a lot of bad blood. It was a hard fought series. Okay. And there was a lot of back and forth. All right. And we have a lot of momentum going into this series. And I think if we continue to put the pedal down, be aggressive and take care of our business, we can maybe catch fire and get that momentum and keep swinging and keep it rolling and make it into that. You know what I mean? I, th- you, you just need to be able to catch fire at that right time. You know what I mean? Yeah. This series is going to push our, um, it's going to show how good our young for the most part defense is, um, because now that these guys figured it out and Bavillier is playing great, uh, Borzol almost took, I mean, who would have thought Matthew Borzol was going to take a back step roll to Anthony Bavillier in the playoffs? Like, don't worry, you got this, man. Yeah, right. Uh, but uh, Pajo, and the Pajo, Pajo's Pajo. also played above. Uh, Borzol has seven points in nine games. That's a remarkable thing. It's just these other guys have played so well, they played as well as him or in Bavillier's sense above him so far. So that's, uh, that's why this team's dangerous because now they figured out their scoring touch and Bavillier has been a points per game guy in the playoffs. So you got to stop him. You got to stop Borzol. You got to stop Nelson. You got to stop Everly. Just like us, they have depth yep. and they have the best fourth line, graded fourth line, as long as Clutterbuck can play in hockey. And if he can't, they have Johnson, who's six five and can kill anyone on the ice. I was just going to so, say I mean, that. Yeah. So <laughs> but it doesn't really make a difference. Yeah. So that they have a very solid fourth line there. You got to attack them at their when their smaller defenders are on the ice that you can physical up like the Tomas Hickeys of the world. Uh, Andy Green's not as quick as he used to be. He's still a good defenseman, so you have to take advantage Agreed. of being slower. Uh, he's still a good defenseman overall, though. But you got to take advantage of those smaller guys. You can't let them continue to play as well as they did against the Capitals. Otherwise, you're going to have obviously issues against this Islanders team if you allow their defense core to play. Because Nick Letty, you also have to be able to watch who, who is, of course, on the Blackhawks. He can do some stuff on both ends. You don't want to give him too much open looks from the point like we allowed for some Canadians defensemen that on Shea Weber because they're not the best shooters. You probably don't want to allow that for Nick Letty just to give him a shot because you think it's not going to be a good one. He's not a guy. He's a guy that could put on. So that's a different strategy there. They have more offensive defensemen than the Canadians. The Canadians kind of have Weber and Mette at this point. So you want to make sure you actually guard the point a little bit more in terms of them. Be better in the transition. Who, yeah. Be, we need to be better in the transition. We need to be able to make that first crisp pass out of our zone so that we can get out of our zone instead of like what Montreal was doing. They were um, in the passing lanes. They were in, they were, they were interrupting us while we were even trying to come out of the zone. And I have a feeling because it's a copycat league and they've had how long to look at us now that they're going to probably play something very similar to that style because look at how it disrupted us against Montreal. OK, yeah. So um, I think that's going to be another key factor, too. And if we can't get out of our own zone with that first 
clean pass and get it moving in the transition game, that's where I think the Islanders are going to be able to beat us because they're going to be, they have the same kind of speed that we do. They have the same kind of depth that we do and they have the scoring touchback. And and if we allow them chances, they're going to capitalize. (laughs) You know what I mean? And yeah, well, this is also uh, for the fact that um, he always gets unfairly ripped on Twitter, but also I know Chris will like this when he watches it because of uh, his favorite player. But Voracek has played good defense in the playoffs so far. He and also I'm has four been surprised by that too. And four assists uh, in eight games. So if anyone can do math, that puts him at a points per game pace. So for anyone that says he's not having a good playoffs, he's the only top line guy that actually is having a good playoff. Um, haven't so, heard a thing about him having anything bad. Where, haven't heard word one about him being but, bad. Uh, but Voracek's the only guy on the top line. Fairby, obviously, who normally wasn't, now he's become a top line guy, is now doing good. Uh, Lotz has now, other, after those bad games, reestablished himself and is Agreed. doing normal Scott Lawton again. And then Albe Kubel, before he got injured, was actually doing good in the games he was in. He had two goals already Super, in the six. Yep. So mm-hmm. great on the four check and everything. So if he's able to come back, that's huge. But either way, our depth, this is just going to be a fun series to watch because these teams try to run all four of their lines. And uh, it's just going to be who can – also, at the Flyers score first, they've been pretty good. So this is really one of those series who can score first. What are we, 6-0? and oh? Is re- yeah, I think so. It's really going to help all. us. Yeah. But either way, uh, throughout the year, we've been really good when we scored first. So I can't remember a record, but I just know we were one of the higher. Oh, ranks. oh, oh. Like, I thought you were just talking about in the. No, in I'm the, just uh, saying, in the... yeah, in general, throughout the year, when oh. we that stat, we were one uh, of the teams, It's but... more than, it's a very high percentage. Very, yeah. very, I would say so, like 70 to 80% of our games, if we score first, we win. Yeah, so that's why. That's crucial against this Islanders team because they're a very good team also when they score first. So exactly, I think uh, that's a very big thing to happen in this series. I do believe that's why it'll go six because you're going to yeah. have a lot of back and forth there, which lead to uh, the team squeaking out a one goal win and so, like us getting one of those games and them getting one of those games. Might and then be an overtime game or two. Yeah, which will probably make it go six instead of what some say could be five. But yeah. I would say Flyers and six, and I'm assuming you're staying with that from yep. last night. Yep, yep. Haven't changed one little bit. Uh, it, flyers and six. For everything that we even talked about, uh, especially now that we've had a much deeper dive into it and we're, we're able to analyze a little bit more closely, uh, I, I really think that if we play our game and we stay on track and we play a team game, that we can take it to the Islanders it's going to be a hard fought series because they are going to be able to match us in their depth. They have some of the same kind of speed. Their defense is a little suspect. Their goaltending is a little suspect. I agree with everything what you and Perlo said, uh, with everything that we've said so far about that. Uh, and, and I can't even add on to that. You know what I mean? So definitely think Flyers and Six going to be a hard fought series. I also agree with what you said, too. I think this is going to be one of the most interesting ones, too, because. There's not exactly love between the Islanders and the Flyers. And it's going to get chippy. Because we are now talking about a berth to the conference final here. Yeah. Okay? So now this is where we're going to start seeing the rubber meet the road. No, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Emotions are going to be high. Yeah. But as... uh... The great Steve or Pirlo would say it's been our whole uh, 42 here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and uh, for Joe and Steele, you can catch him at steelflyers.com and steelflyers52 on Twitter. And you can check me at jjborg26 on Twitter, true underscore Philly sport for the podcast. This has been the grittiest take. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And check out the game tonight between the Avalanche and Stars because you got – the some of the highest scores in the playoffs so far and Kadri was six goals Pavelski was six goals and uh Dennis Gorianov was six goals of four of them being in one game so yeah. check check that out tonight as this has been the grittiest take for Steel. I'm Joe have a great safe and pleasant night enjoy the hockey everyone
Peace out.